Hello everybody, my name is Rodrigo Castillo. I am a PhD candidate from the Department of Civil Structural and Environmental Engineering from the University of Buffalo. And my presentation is showing our attempt to predict the shear condition of reinforced concrete beams with existing shear, shear cracks. And for this, we are using machine learning. Uh, it's been almost seven decades since one of the major or most notorious shear failures in US history. Since then, we have learned a lot about the shear phenomenon and its mechanisms. So much so that now we have normatives, uh, theories, and even models. But still, there is some significant variability in our predictions, even for the final shear strength. But if predicting the final shear strength is challenging, trying to estimate the shear condition during the service life of the structure is even more complex, especially because the only promising sign of shear deterioration are cracks. On the other hand, we also, it's not news that the number of structures in the US in need of rehabilitation is large. Therefore, the resources need to be addressed efficiently. So how can we estimate the shear condition in a timely manner? If we go by standards, we can only predict the final shear strength. If we go by more refined methodologies, they are time consuming. So here's where machine learning sees its opportunity to make a contribution. And the objective is to predict shear stiffness and stirrup strain histories as a function of the shear crack width in reinforced concrete beams. So now I will show you for our approach the experimental data that we uh, collected from literature, the machine learning approach that we are using, hmm. uh, also some predictions in beams that were not even part of the training sets, and the expected outcome of this research. So let's start with the experimental sets. This is the experimental setup from where our data comes from, but we did not perform the tests, we just collected them from literature. We have all these beams fail in shear, and we have three sets of 122, 146 beams to train three algorithms. The first set measures shear and its corresponding uh, crack width. Now the crack width is measured in the shear region. This is in half the distance between the point of application of the load and the supports. The two main measurements in the second subset are mid-span deflections and the corresponding shear. This is the first correlation that we are looking at in the screen on the left side, which is a function of deflection and shear. After this, later, we calculate the slope of each of these uh, load steps, and we correlated that into crack width. So now we have a correlation between effective stiffness, which is the normalization of the stiffness, and crack width. Finally, the third set measures the strain in the stirrups and crack width. Now, we choose the maximum the stirrup strain, we normalize it by the yielding strain, and now we correlate it to crack width. So in summary, you have three sets, all of them correlated to crack widths, and in, on top of that, each specimen has its own geometry, material properties, and also reinforcement conditions. Now, as for our machine learning approach, we are using Gaussian process regression algorithm. And this algorithm relies on two main principles. The first one is the concept of the joint Gaussian distribution, which is fully defined by this mean and this covariant matrix. If we wanted to find the conditional distribution, the resultant is also a Gaussian distribution. So based on this principle, the algorithm states the following. First, all the target features or predictions follow a joint Gaussian distribution with a uh, mean zero and covariance matrix K. And also, if two samples have similar predictive features, they should have high correlation and therefore similar predictions also. So if we somehow could find this covariance matrix, we could apply the conditional property and come up with equations for predictions and its corresponding variances. But how do we define this covariance matrix? The covariance matrix is given by the kernel function. This kernel function is just a measure or a metric of the similarity between predictive features. But there are two parameters that need to be defined first. These are sigma and L. These parameters define the shape of the functions that correlate predictive and target features. And here's where the second concept comes into play. 
Imagine that the x-axis is one of our predicted features, let's say crack width, and the y-axis is one of the target features, in this case, let's say stiffness. The predictive domain are, are, is full of predictive functions and potential functions to correlate these two. Now, as we have not seen any data yet, the algorithm cannot choose one of these. When we provide a training sample, the algorithm selects all those functions that comply with this value. If we keep providing more samples, the algorithm reduces the uncertainty surrounding those. And the parameters sigma and L define the shape of this function, which is the mean all of all those possible functions. And here is the, where machine learning happens, through the optimization of sigma and L. Once we define them, we can use our uh, kernel function, populate our covariance matrix, and make predictions. Now, the general process of our machine learning is simple. We just collect the data. We organize them in predictive and target features. After that, we split them into training and validation sets. Then we train our algorithms, Gaussian process regression. Then we just measure the errors. So these are results from training in algorithms using k-fold cross-validation. The x-axis represent the predictions from our machine learning algorithms. The y-axis are experimental values. And we have found 18%, 33%, and 17% and mean absolute percent errors for predictions of shear histories, stiffness, and stirrup strain. Now, This section shows you some predictions in beams that were not even part of the training sets also. In the left side, you have predictions on beams with shear reinforcement. In the right side, you have predictions in beams without shear reinforcement, or at least less than the one that ACI prescribes. Here we have predictions of the histories. This is shear history. The continuous lines represent the, the predictions from the algorithms, and the dashed lines represent experimental values. We also have histories for stiffness. Same way, continuous lines are predictions from Gaussian process and dashed lines, experimental values. And finally, predictions of a strain for those beams with the stirrups. Finally, I want to show you the expected outcome that is already running. Um, we are hoping, or we have a model uh, software application that takes the inputs or predictive features, and for any given crack width, it can predict shear, stiffness, and strain stirrups, and also offers a classification as priority of rehabilitation. This app can also take entire files of data sets with different crack widths. If you like, you could visualize them by beam, in this case. And you have predictions of shear histories or stiffness histories and strain histories and some additional classification. Uh, you could also get the entire file for further analysis if you like to. Now, the application also shows uh, the information regarding the ranges of the predictive properties that we use for training. And it also offers some information in the details regarding the classification that we are using. And with this, I want to end my presentation. And thank you for your time.